we started uh, to become interested in using more green type fuels like water and sunlight as fuels that nature is actually using uh, to generate energy and to mediate processes that keep us living. And in this framework, we got interested in splitting water and finding out how, how we can synthetically, in the lab, use water to be split into oxygen and hydrogen, and so use hydrogen as a good energy source to drive uh, engines, to drive, uh, well, ultimately perhaps cars. And water, of course, is a uh, energy carrier that is widely abundant, and if we can uh, split it into hydrogen and oxygen, we eventually use hydrogen as the energy carrier to, that will get oxidized, that will get burned, rather than fossil fuels. Now, the advantage of using water as a source for hydrogen is that if the hydrogen gets burned, it's forming back water. So we kind of close the cycle. And of course, this is not a, a, a perpetuum mobile that just runs on its own, but we actually use the sunlight plus our catalyst to generate dihydrogen. At the moment, we're using iridium as the active part of our catalyst, but of course, uh, we're interested in expanding that approach and to use other elements of the periodic table. Iridium is a precious metal like, for example, gold or palladium or platinum, quite expensive on the market, it's quite rare. But iridium caught our interest uh, because it has an uh, enormous activity in activating stable or typically robust bonds. And I guess we found um, uh, both uh, an important role of the, of the environment in uh, splitting water as well as uh, the, the demands on the metal center and we are quite positive that we can extrapolate this on one hand side to get even better environments around the iridium so to boost the activity of the iridium further and on the other hand side to replace the iridium by perhaps cheaper metals but using the same principles on the environment to get water activated in a, in, a, in a catalytic way and in a sustainable way.